In this video, we'll be showing you how to use input sets along with the Sauce Labs API platform. In order to use input sets, we'll be using a Sauce Labs REST API get call that uses the tunnel owner name as well as the tunnel ID to fetch information about tunnels running on Sauce Labs. To create this test, you'll need to have tunnels running on your Sauce Labs tunnel dashboard and have a Sauce username and access key. Go to the Sauce Docs website and copy the get call from the API docs. Next, create a get component in your Sauce Connect test. Paste in the URL, name the variable that stores the response to this API call SC payload. In the get request that you copy pasted, you'll want to replace the username with the username of an owner of a tunnel and the tunnel ID with the ID of a tunnel you see running on the Sauce Connect Tunnels dashboard. You will also need to add basic authentication to this GET request since it requires a Sauce username and access key. Next, you'll need to add a simple assert exists component and check that there is something stored in the SC payload variable. You can save and run your test and check out the results. Now that you have your GET component set up, you're ready to add an input set. You will want to either delete or rename the default input sets as it can interfere with your API test. We'll create the first input set and name it Tunnel Owner 1. From the Tunnels dashboard on Sauce Labs, copy the owner of one of the tunnels and put it in as the owner parameter in your first input set. Create a second parameter called Tunnel ID and copy the Tunnel ID from Sauce Labs. Once you have your first input set, create a second one called Tunnel Owner 2. Do the same thing you did before, adding parameters from the Sauce Labs platform. When you add input sets to your API tests, your tests are run once for each input set that you create. That means if you create two input sets, every command in your test is run twice. Now that you have input sets created, you're ready to add them to your test. In the get component you just created, you'll want to replace the owner username with the owner variable and the tunnel ID with the tunnel ID from the input set. Save and run your test to check that it works. Take a look at the results. You can see that every get component you added is run twice, once for each input set that you created. The last thing we're going to do is actually check the payload that we retrieved when we made the API call. From the project page where the tests are listed, choose the HTTP client tab. Add a get request with a basic authorization. First, you'll need to replace the username with the username of a tunnel owner and the tunnel ID with the ID of a tunnel that is running. You can grab a copy of the basic authorization from the get request that you created earlier. If you take a look at the response payload in the HTTP client, you'll notice that there is an item called owner. This owner should match the owner name of the tunnel. If you go back into your test and add in an assert equals component, we'll assert that we want to see the owner value retrieved from the Sauce Connect payload that's returned. Here, you can put in the owner parameter again from your input set. When you save and run your test, we have an extra check to make sure that when you retrieve a tunnel from the Sauce Labs dashboard, the owner matches. In the next video, you'll be able to see how you can save snippets of code as well as variables and parameters in the vault so you can use it across different tests and projects.